Cool. So, continuing the process, we're essentially now going to dive deeper. Now, we're not going to take the body as a whole, which we can. Uh, and many times... Yeah, yeah, let's keep it consistent. Let's go ahead and take the body as a whole, from body to body. And then we'll take it apart internally, so it's a little more organized. So the body is normally the biggest part, so I think it's basically to the bottom. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to cut the body. Put in its place. And then create that file. I'll show you another way to create it. Uh, if you're using VS Code, it's really cool. Go into File, uh, Open Folder, and it actually opens up a specifically uh, asked folder in this little window where we can actually manipulate everything through here. So let's go ahead and do that. New File, Body.php. So I'm just going to split this into three pieces. We're not going to go into the open and into the close. Uh, that'll be for much, much later down the road. In this case, we're just going to take a very quick way to organize this into this. And then I'm going to prepare foot.php. There we go. So back in my index PHP, there's no real foot here. But what I do like to consider, uh, my foot is a set of JavaScript functions. that will run <clears throat> at the end of a, the load time and essentially set up uh, some listening events and things we'll go over in the future with JavaScript. So I'm gonna keep that foot there even though it will be empty. The foot itself is there. This file does exist and it's uh, there, but it's empty. So that's not gonna be a problem. The problem with require is if this file does not exist and you're pointing to it. Uh, pointing meaning putting the directory location so those situations you got to be careful make sure that the file is there if you want to actually load something if not just don't put a require you don't need it cool so now we're ready to actually play with the body itself and start analyzing how each piece works uh, the nav bar we can customize into our own way in the future as well uh, but it's not too crazy complicated up here it's already basically set up if we wanted more functionality kind of like how i've created mine uh, with a little search bar etc uh, that will be figured out as well and some extra commanding uh, categories for the search bar okay so rather than going into the nav bar we're going to take a look at taking apart the actual contents of each block well, first we gotta identify what a block starts as and where it ends. And there are two kinds of blocks as we can tell. There are full blocks and then there are half blocks. Sadly, this template doesn't have a nice way to organize those two types of blocks. Uh, so it's kind of hard to create a half block when you have to actually have a top and a bottom half block in order to actually fill in the physical space in the bootstrap theme. Uh, otherwise, there are ways to go around it, which will be a future modification. But for now, we'll keep it as is, and we're going to go actually based on how these are structured. So there we go. Uh, if you're new to CSS, consider this. There are columns available in CSS, and you can see these columns directly with our uh, actual blocks here. These columns are split into four quadrants with three slices. What's happening here is each, in this case, each one is worth three units from left to right in the horizontal. So you've got three, six, nine, and 12. There's a total of 12 left to right horizontal units available. So this number at the end uh, <clears throat> can essentially be used uh, real quick. This number at the end can essentially be changed to make sure that that particular block fits uh, as you wish. Uh, six, five, seven, whatever number between one to 12 will be available. And there are some ways to make some spacing and paddings around it as well. Uh, the SM in the middle is all based on the size of the screen. So in this case, whether it's a small screen like a phone or tablet versus a large screen, it's still going to be a three by three. So you can customize those as well to make sure it's more mobile friendly and basically fits inside the screen that you're hoping to uh, occupy. Uh, for instance, if I show you now, if I close this, uh, when it gets super small, it does become by default a full unit. 
that normally is initiated unless it's default but that's normally initiated with the call xs12 uh, that's going to give us that same uh, full 12 uh, spaces across now keep in mind it doesn't matter what size the screen is those units still apply by dividing this page into four spaces and then you'll see still that this does still have those uh, quadrants they're just super tiny therefore we make sure the image spreads out more uh, though but those are just designing techniques we will go in the future when we do more modifications to CSS okay <clears throat> so and so far we're identified the block we've identified the pieces that this block contains inside there's another div that organizes the information and just to be a little bit anal here with organization I'm going to tab this out correctly <clears throat> Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of this here and I'll minimize that for now. So let's focus on the code. Uh, first and foremost, we need to set it up. So we want to organize all body components inside of a folder that matches the name. So it's not too uh, out of the ordinary to see. So right now I'm not seeing it, so I gotta click here. Always click on the folder if you wanna create or in the blank space. Uh, but if you wanna be specific on where to add the folder, make sure you right click in the folder you want to add it to. So we're going to go ahead and put body so it should match the actual body PHP name exactly. And inside of there, we're going to start putting block, uh, block components. And we'll go ahead and make another one for the actual blocks. Oh, that's a file. I wanted to make that an actual folder. So let's try that again. So the body will contain two folders, block components and blocks so it's as logical as that this is the functionality of the blocks and these are the actual blocks in their complete structure so if we have that set up then let's go ahead and create the grid because technically all of these blocks live within that grid so that's just going to be a file block grid dot php and we are essentially going to take those pieces of the blocks as we create them and start stacking them up here. So the block grid is organized with some more uh, HTML code. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Uh, body, this is the nav. Cool, so the nav is, oh, we still have to take that. Oh, I forgot about the nav. Let's go ahead and just take that right now. Just to organize it a little bit further, we know that the nav now is in the body. So keep that in mind as you do your required. So we're in includes body and then slash nav.php not created yet but we will create it right after we save so in our body we will add a new file called nav.php and you'll see that now we're basically organizing in such a way we don't have to stare hard at a lot of code and then space out uh, we can actually just click and move between all the components and modify whatever we want at that moment in time and honestly as a programmer uh, with a tiny bit of add Working on one component for a long time can get really bothersome and stressful. And most of the times when I stop working on it and I go back to it later, it the problem fixes itself in five minutes. So that's why I like to move back and forth between components and just kind of have a pace that works for me. In this case, this organization works perfect for my pace and my uh, dynamics in changing what I'm doing. All right. So the nav is there, we can modify it later. We can actually have a specific uh, functionality set. For instance, from the example I showed here, this nav bar from the other uh, set of files, which you'll see here, the nav bar actually has a bit more content to it. Uh, so let me go to body again, nav. So nav actually began to expand. So I created a nav folder on its own. Uh, but what it's doing really is there's a uh, bar that's going to contain text and there is a listener added to the enter and to the button available when it's visible uh, when that happens depending on which one of these icons was last clicked they're not highlighted yet but eventually i will make it highlight but depending on which one is last clicked it will do a different action with those uh, commands so i can actually make both a search and a terminal through a single input area, which we'll go through and actually start making a really cool PHP terminal. So that'd be fun. Uh, however, it can get complicated, but the key is every time you think of a future upgrade to a specific component, 
Make sure you just do this process with the folders. Organize all the contents, in this case the commander.js for me, uh, which will work as the the console that I'm working on, but that it will expand even more, I'm sure, uh, depending on how long this project goes on or really how popular it gets and what use it gets out of the stuff. So always make things uh, expandable. And this is the ideal way to make it expandable without depending on uh, frameworks and organizational processes like Angular, uh, Node.js, and etc. <clears throat> Of course, you're free to use Composer, you're free to use any fra uh, framework you wish uh, for PHP if you know what those are, uh, but in this case these videos are educational and I'm only doing it without the frameworks for efficiency's sake and just to teach the bare components of these uh, programming languages. Alright, so in the next video we'll start taking apart those blocks and start giving them their own spaces and their own uh, automation, basically.